You can also use spot colors to identify where a varnish and a coating is, and you would do that the same exact way that you created your dye line. So there are many different types of varnishes and coatings available when printing. They fall into two generalized categories. We'll call them flood or overall coating or spot coatings. A flood coating, like an overall aqueous coating, does not require a dye line because the coating is spread over the entire press sheet. It also does not require color separation or a printing plate. For these reasons, and because the coating is water-based, aqueous coatings tend to be the cheapest type of coating if you wanted to add a little bit of a gloss or a dull um, coating to your project. Spot coatings, the ones that we're going to focus on in this lecture, uh, like spot UV coatings and spot varnishes, are applied via a printing plate. Since a printing plate is used to apply the coating, it can be customized to determine which areas of the press sheet will receive the coating and which areas will not. Just like when we create color separations, we identify where yellow is going to print and where yellow is not going to print. We'll do the same thing with the spot coating. The ability to decide where the coating is applied makes it a spot coating, so it's in some areas and it's not in others. Varnishes can be added to a regular printing press tower and are printed in line and air dried. UV coatings cost more because they require specialized equi equipment, either attached directly to the printing press or it can be detached as an um, offline process. And they are UV cured, so it requires a UV light attachment as soon as they pass under the UV light. It's more expensive, but as soon as the sheets come off press, the coating will be adhered to the sheet and it won't be wet. It doesn't require dry time. The steps that you're going to use to create a spot gloss varnish or any other type of spot coating, I'm just going to use gloss varnish as an example because it's a specific example. But if you were doing spot glitter UV coating, you would do the same process. First, you need to create a new spot color and rename it gloss varnish. And just like our dye line, you can use any color that's in contrast to your design. If you're working with a commercial printer and they tell you that all of their gloss varnish is pale blue, then make it a pale blue color. Next, create a new layer and name it gloss varnish. And just like your dye line, anything that's going to print with gloss varnish, you need to add to this layer. I also remember uh, recommend moving it to the top of your layers panel. If you're using multiple coatings, multiple varnishes, multiple dye lines, just move them all to the top. They don't you can choose the order, they don't have to literally be the top one, it's just a good practice to have. Next, use the pen tool to create a shape that identifies where the project will have a spot gloss varnish applied to it. Uh, then you're going to fill your gloss varnish shape with the spot gloss varnish color. This is the only difference between the dye line and a coating. You want to have a fill color, not a stroke, because you want it to print in the entire area that you want. And so you'll want to use a fill, not a stroke. It's very important that you remember that. Next, you want to set your varnish shape to be an overprint, just like your dye line, because you want the colors of whatever is in your project to print below the varnish, and then you'll just add the varnish over the top. Do not use that gloss varnish color anywhere else in your design. So if you think that color that you made is really cool and you want to use it as part of your project, again, create a new color swatch, and then do not use that spot gloss varnish color anywhere else. You also want to double check to make sure that you successfully made your gloss varnish fill color as an overprint and you can do that via the separations preview panel. And then you're going to lock your gloss varnish layer. Now I've added an eighth step here that's different than the dye line because it says if you're using more than one type of varnish repeat steps one through seven for the second varnish. So if you're using gloss and dull varnish in a project you need to create a new spot color and a new layer because it's different. It's dull and this one is gloss. But if you just want to use gloss varnish in multiple places or on multiple pages within a design, they would all go on the same layer using the same spot color because they're all using the same type of varnish.